Not too long ago, I did a full-on review of the all-new two-stroke 4.0 bulb. This is an all-new LED bulb from Morimoto. The first comment that I got on YouTube was, how does it compare to the king of bulbs, the Ultra 2 from GTR Lighting? Well, naturally, I'm gonna make a video on that, and here it is. Before I get to the light outputs and show you how they perform in a couple different headlight housings, like this one from a Ram, a reflector housing, and this one here from a GMC, it looks like, with a projector housing, I wanna explain a few things to show you guys what I'm talking about with light output. Each one of these headlight housings and all of your vehicles at home produce a different light output. The reflectors are different. The position of the bulb inside of the housing is different. So ideally, the best thing we can do is find an LED bulb that replicates your original halogen bulb. That wire wound filament inside your halogen bulb, as long as the LEDs on this bulb right here replicate that, chances are this is going to be a good bulb. But which one is truly best? This bulb right here, the Morimoto bulb, has something unique that I wanted to explain before I show you the light outputs. The driver. This driver, when you power it up, it's about 18 and a half watts of power. But after about 15 minutes, it ramps up to about 22 and a half watts of power. If you leave these on inside your vehicle, over time, they might get brighter or at least not lose brightness, which means that we need to test in a whole different way. We need to then show a light output but then measure it before and then after 15 minutes. And we never really done that test with the Ultra 2. We just turn it on and say, dang, look how bright this is. Every single aftermarket LED replacement bulb or even headlight housing or fog light, all of them lose brightness over time. It's going to have less lux or actual usable brightness at a certain point. And that's what we're measuring today is lux. We're using a digital lux meter and measuring the actual usable brightness at a certain point. It's just one really good measurement that helps me compare one light to another. So this is what the light output looks like from one F-150 headlight housing. This headlight housing is a reflector housing, which means it's essentially got a bunch of mirrors that the light is bouncing off of and giving you this light output. This is the two-stroke 4.0. As you can see, it's got that hot spot in the center. You got that bright white color, Pay attention to the beam pattern. What you want is a lot of that light down in the center. That's gonna give you that punch of light, but you also want some width. With the Morimoto bulb, I measured 880 maximum lux. Now, like I said, we're testing this a little bit different. So I'm gonna leave this on for 15 minutes and retest it. Now, after 15 minutes, I usually would see less brightness, but I didn't. The Morimoto Two Stroke 4.0, like I said, ramps up and I measured 900 maximum lux, which means that after 15 minutes, I gained another 20 lux. So I gained brightness at the brightest point on the wall. That's a win for Morimoto. And here's what it looks like when you install the GTR Lighting Ultra 2 bulb. As you can see, the color temperature is a bit different. It's definitely a bright white, where the Morimoto 4.0 was maybe a little bit more warmer of a color. And in my opinion, I do like the beam pattern here a little bit better. On low beam with the Ultra 2 bulb, I measured 1,440 maximum lux. If you were paying attention, that's much brighter than the two stroke 4.0. To make it fair, I also left the Ultra 2 on for 15 minutes and I measured 1,290 lux. So as you can see, the Ultra 2 in an F-150 headlight housing, even after 15 minutes, even after losing a substantial amount of brightness compared to the startup brightness, it still was about 43% brighter than the 4.0. Now I know you're watching this and you're probably glossing over all the other facts that I have about each one of these bulbs because you saw the light outputs and the brightness and thought that is the nail in the coffin right there. I want the Ultra 2. I get it. I really do get it. These bulbs, they are not DOT compliant. And a no LED replacement bulb is DOT compliant in America. But if they were, the Morimoto Two Stroke 4.0 has the most like-minded characteristics of a DOT compliant bulb out there. It makes sense. The designer or the lead optical engineer that created this also sits on the board that make all of those decisions. And so what he's been hearing, what he sees, what they do in Europe, he's taken it and then he's built it and packed it into this right here. This was designed if there ever was a compliance in America for LED replacement bulbs, this would be the characteristics that every other 
LED, aftermarket LED manufacturer would have to replicate. Now let's swap this headlight housing out for a popular RAM housing, this 09 to 18 RAM housing. This also is a reflector housing. As you can see on low beam, I measured from one headlight housing with the 4.0s installed 660 maximum lux. This one after 15 minutes did lose brightness at 610 maximum lux, but still you only lost about 50 lux after 15 minutes. That's pretty dang good from an aftermarket bulb. The Ultra 2 bulb in the 09 to 18 RAM housing looks like this. As you can see, the light output is much taller. If it was any taller than this, I'd be afraid that the light would actually be reflecting right in front of you and then blinding you as you're driving. However, in my opinion, this is a good beam pattern. If I had a RAM, I most definitely would recommend the Ultra 2 over the two stroke 4.0. However, I already know what Morimoto would say. I specifically designed this bulb to not have a beam pattern so tall in anticipation of you also upgrading your fog lights. I know it's hard to tell, but I can also see a little bit more width with the GTR lighting ultra two bulb versus the 4.0. I measure 1010 maximum lux in the Ram with the ultra two. And after 15 minutes, I measured 900 maximum lux. So in this case, in this reflector housing, the Ultra 2 is still brighter by about 48% after 15 minutes. Now I know there's a common misconception that you can't just put an LED bulb in replace of your halogen bulb in a projector housing. That's simply not true. Now I will fully admit that some projector housings out there do not allow you to emit a very good beam pattern no matter what LED bulb you choose. Here's a GMC housing and as you can see, it's not my favorite looking beam pattern, but it's still an upgrade over your stock halogen lights. With the Morimoto 2 stroke 4.0 installed, I measured 340 maximum lux and 330 maximum lux after 15 minutes. When you install the Ultra 2, I measured 440 maximum lux and after 15 minutes, I measured 390 maximum lux. Later on, I wanna talk about the adjustability of these bulbs, but let me just show you in this housing how important it is to have a bulb that adjusts. Look at me adjusting the GTR lighting Ultra 2 bulb inside the headlight housing. Look how much of a change in the beam pattern you get. You are gonna have to play with the bulb to get it just right. You might have to take it out, readjust it, and put it back in. In this GMC projector housing, the GTR lighting Ultra 2 wins in the brightness game at being about 18% brighter after 15 minutes of it being on. If you purchase an LED bulb from Amazon or eBay and it's not adjustable, which means you can't clock this right here and turn it, or the collar, you can't turn it, that's a major problem. Aligning needs to look something like this. On maybe a RAM, it might be a little bit different in say the high beam. However, generally, this is how the bulb needs to look. Not like this, not like this, just like this, where the LEDs are shooting at the three o'clock and the nine o'clock. That right there is going to give you generally a really good beam pattern. That's important whether you have a projector housing or a reflector housing. So the last headlight housing I wanted to test was another projector housing. And this is what it looks like when you install a two stroke 4.0. As you can see, it's got a pretty dang good looking beam pattern. It's super wide. You can really tell this bulb was engineered to produce a good beam pattern. And here it is. I measured 330 maximum lux after 15 minutes. I measured 340 maximum lux when I installed the GTR lighting Ultra 2. I measured 460 maximum lux on low beam. The Ultra 2 has been out for quite some time and just look at that beam pattern. I know which one I would rather choose when upgrading the Tacoma light. I measured 460 maximum lux with the Ultra 2 and after 15 minutes I measured 410 maximum lux. It didn't gain brightness like the 4.0 but after 15 minutes, it was still about 20% brighter. A lot of people say, if you're gonna put this in your fog lights, Morimoto especially says, you don't want the brightest thing out there. You're not gonna see all the way down there where your light outputs are. You're going to see right in front of you and it's going to glare on the road and then blind you as you're driving. So it does make sense. They did have compliance in mind when they made this. These will work in an off-road fog light or if you're going to be driving off-road, you can install these in your headlights. We definitely go in depth on every single vehicle we possibly can get our hands on. So be sure to check out our YouTube channel. I think I've made probably 20 or 30 videos reviewing the Ultra 2, showing you just how much brighter this is compared to other bulbs. This one's newer, so I haven't done that a lot, but we plan to in the future. So if you got a forerunner or something, just type in your year, make and model, and you'll see it on our YouTube page, the review. Now, as far as build quality goes, 
Both of them, from what I can tell so far, are built pretty reliably. This one so far has been pretty bulletproof. I have yet to see an Ultra 2 really fail. The Ultra 2 has a lifetime warranty from GTR Lighting, and the Morimoto 2-Stroke 4.0 has a lifetime warranty from Morimoto. I wanna dive into something else, which is the way that these bulbs are cooled. The Ultra 2 has this cooling fan on the backside. Now, I know a lot of you are saying, why would you say this is the king of bulbs if it's got a cooling fan? Because you know that mud is gonna get caked in here and it's not going to work. I have seen it fail one time and that's because this dude went mudding all the time and this was in an exposed fog light housing. Now, the backside of this, if it does get caked with mud, sure, but the bulb still worked. It was just the fan that failed. So I guess if you were to give a win over how these are cooled, I would say over the Ultra 2, the Morimoto one has a better cooling system. This one has an intake that sucks in the air on the side of this bulb here, and then it comes out the other side and circulates inside your headlight housing, which actually effectively warms the headlight housing. So it not only cools this to allow the longevity of the bulb and to keep the LEDs cool so that they can pack a punch, but it also acts as a heating function for your headlight if you're driving around during the winter. And if there is snow and ice buildup, it's probably not gonna happen on this bulb. Now, I did this little test inside the studio right here on the table where I left it on for 15 minutes to see just how hot the headlight housing got. With the Ultra 2, this is what it looked like after 15 minutes. And when I did the two-stroke 4.0 bulb, it got to be about the same temperature. As you can see, if you look closely at that screen, you will notice that the circulation of the heat was better on the 4.0, but it just simply did not get hot enough. Like if you compare this to a halogen bulb, the original bulb that you're probably upgrading, it gets like two, 300 degrees. That was extremely hot and that will melt snow when you're driving around. If we're talking about fog lights, I would say for sure, definitely I could recommend the two stroke 4.0. If you're doing something that's enclosed inside of a headlight housing and you have enough space to then put your dust cover back on, sure, maybe the Ultra 2 has a better cooling system for you both of which are very effective and both of which will keep the bulb from burning out. I wanna discuss fitment for a second as well. So as you can see, this right here, the two stroke 4.0, has a much smaller base than the Ultra 2 because the Ultra 2 has the fan right here and this one doesn't with its cooling system. That is actually a big deal because if these bulbs cannot fit inside of a headlight housing where you put the dust cover back on, that's a flop. If you do not put your dust cover back on, your headlights will have a bunch of oxidation in there. If you go through a car wash, you're going to have issues. You're gonna have moisture in there, you're gonna have dust in there, and it's gonna look like garbage. What was the point of upgrading your lights if your headlight housing itself looks like garbage? Thankfully at Headlight Revolution, we've actually seen a lot of ways to work around that. If your dust cover does not go back over the bulb, you can just throw away your dust cover, order a different dust cover, make sure you type in your year, make and model to get the right one. You can add it in the back of here and it's like this big cup. It gives you more space so that way you still have it sealed all the way around on the back side of your headlight housing, but you can fit this bulb. This bulb, if you compare it to all the other bulbs on the market, it's still got a smaller base than most. And that is still a win, but I definitely would recommend this as far as fitment goes. Now, when you're talking about adjustability both of them are a little different this one on the ultra 2 uses this really tiny allen wrench and to me if you're doing this install outside you have to remove this really tiny screw i'm not a huge fan of that it's better than a lot of other ones because thankfully it is adjustable but there's a really tiny screw and that's the last thing i want to do is lose that i think they anticipated you lose that because on the newer boxes when you open it up there are some additional screws so you can take out the screw you can turn the collar and then you put the screw back in now this one's a little bit different the 4.0 is different and that is because it now comes with this. This is one of the biggest differences between the 3.0 from Morimoto versus the 4.0. It's how it's adjusted. Before, you used to be able to like spin it almost by your hand, but they would get worn out and then they wouldn't work. Whereas now, you have to use this and you have to loosen this collar, remove it, not all the way, but loosen it up enough to then be able to spin this right here. So that way, when you put it in your headlight housing, you turn it, it locks in place and it's shooting at the three o'clock and the nine o'clock position. I do kind of like this new style that they have when it comes to adjustability for the Morimoto. Remember, brightness 
is only relative to how long you've had it on. The Ultra 2 is going to continually lose brightness, same with all other products out there. Now this held its brightness a lot better than the other LED bulbs we've tested on this channel. And believe me, I know you've seen it, we've tested hundreds of them. Which one would I rather have? If I was going to replace a headlight bulb and it was my vehicle, I would probably have the Ultra 2. If I was going to be replacing a fog light bulb, in my opinion, I would have the Morimoto Two Stroke 4.0. I really don't have to worry because they both have a lifetime warranty. So hopefully this clears the air. This right here is like brute force. And this right here is like refinement. Making this video for you was like choosing between my, my kids. I know I have a favorite, but I probably shouldn't tell you guys. Be sure to go to headlightrevolution.com, type in your year, make and model, and then you can see all of the other products that we've tested for your vehicle.